Otto in Lobo, a slum in the midst of the city. We got here a dry morning and midway it rained and just maybe giving us a clearer reality of what life truly looks like in Otto in Lobo slum. Well, this community came into the, into the existence in 1993, when some of us, like, uh, we need shelter. And in the absence of uh, Lagos State or federal government, local government, lack of mass house or local house to the teaming Lagosians, that's why some of us come to this community and create something out of nothing. This over 20 years old community is home to different people of different tribes who share one thing in common which is living in deplorable conditions. This community, as you can see, uh, is a waterlogged area in which uh, coming down to this community has to do with a lot of water because they recognize, they recognize that at least we are here and they are portion like two rooms, three rooms to some of us to live. Then we pay goods and we put our makeshift buildings for people to live. And since then, we have been appealing, meeting the government, local government, the councillors, as of assembly, as of rep, that at least this government need their collaboration, need their assistance for development projects. But since then, even as of 2008, when we like, let's meet the, gov the Lagos State government, that is where we are, believe and understand that we have to register with the Ministry of Rural Development and Lausa. But since then, we have been doing our normal and uh, necessary meetings and arrangement but since then we have been like still open that someday because here as you can see no dualization of roads no drainage no proper water and no toilet and we are like whatever we are doing here we are just like take pains to gather ourselves and do whatever we need for ourselves so that is we need a lot of things nothing like school nothing like health care nothing like anything social or government intervention as we are here since 1993. A community with hundreds of school aid children can only boast of a makeshift school built by the community leader. In a country like Nigeria, where according to the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, one in every five of the world's out-of-school children is in Nigeria, despite the fact that primary education is officially free and compulsory. The organization said about 10.5 million of Nigeria's children aged 5 to 14 years are not in school. Only 61% of 6 to 11 year olds regularly attend primary school and only 35.6% of children aged 36 to 59 months receive early childhood education. Again, UNICEF puts Nigeria's out of school children at over 10 million as at 2019. But in July of the same year, the Federal Minister for Education, Adamu Adamu, said the number of out of school children in the country now stands at over 16 million. According to him, the 16 million figure was based on the February 2019 census. Adamu noted that out of primary school children stood at 10 million, while children out of secondary school are 6 million, bringing the total to 16 million. Passionate and determined to make a difference through the ballot, this community leader tried his luck at contesting for a political position. I do contest for councillor for five, four times. I contest for local government chairman two times. I contest for House of Assembly two times. Even 2019, I'm one of the candidates in the INEC list to know that level of why we are so much aggressive, not aggressive to, but aggressive to make sure that my people benefited in the scheme of democracy or in governance. At least we have the credibility, we have the criteria to be in that seat. If you people are in the seat, you cannot do the needful. Let people like us be in that seat and help the, because we move around the community, we saw the poverty on a daily basis. As we went around the community, it became even evident that the needs are palpable. We are having a lot of challenges for the past 12 years to 15 years of existing. You can see this is one of the issues we have here. You can even say this is one of the, we have, okay, we have tried our best in terms of intervention from the government, but no idea. Uh, this, this, this is a got actually that come far away, over 20 miles, all the way from Yaba to this place. And um, suddenly somebody just build an hotel here and we find the person, intervention of the uh, government, 
is not available. Nobody assists us in terms of fighting this rich man that just suddenly come to buy some of our people's land here and build this merchant hotel here. So Where is the hotel? The hotel is located at just this part of this, this hotel, at this one of this back of the hotel. He built it all the way from the railway line to this place. So the hotel now spread the water. The, go, the water did not pass through the building and drain it again. You can see this is. You can see the way the water is. It started from here. All, all majority of our building here has collapsed. This part of it here, and all these occupants here living here also, they vacate because of this water issue. Okay, this is it, and we have a lot of children, mothers in this place too. But majority of our, majority of them have packed away from away from here, all because of this water. For seven months pregnant Zainab, whose abode is literally planks of wood put together, health care is an urgent need. If I sick, there is no way to pass and we don't have antenata here. But we just go, we are going out for far for this place. That is why. I sick like three, three, three months ago, but I go away. My mother come to come and take me from here because we don't have um, and not, I not have clinic. Zainab now has a baby girl, 41 day old, as at the day of filming. I gave birth to May 24. That's Joya. I just want to go to the There is no any lockdown again. Life seems just normal, and right here, many homes and families are made in spite of the clear poverty and lack seen here. Paul is a petty trader whose business has been halted as a result of COVID-19 pandemic. He takes us to where he calls his home. Since when I come to this Lagos, now here I've been staying. This is my room. This is my last one. How many rooms do you have? Just four rooms. I don't stay here now, almost 20 something years now. When I live for this side, and as I live for here, now, now this Lagos, I see my wife marry. And now here, self, I begin born children. I have almost uh, eight children, plus grandchildren now, where they are among. So, since that time, now, I manage my life, still rich today. This is the freezer from uh, this is where they use some do market from Ido. So I just bring and come because of. As they say, make you come out, say they don't know what, make everybody stay for you again. I make you carry this one, come here, come stay. This is a uh, bed fruit. For bathroom. Yeah, this is uh, my daughter here, this is the Hebrew. And the children. When it rains, everybody go just go inside because of the rain. Because the slum say water will just plenty. Today only say the water no plenty. That's why if here say for no, no they allow plenty to pass because of uh, uh, the the rain rain this thing. So that's why. That's uh, so what they do. See, this is another room uh, uh, beside that place. With open defecation common here, diseases arrive. Once again, according to a UNICEF and World Health Organization monitoring report, one in four Nigerians, which translates to about 47 million people, practice open defecation. And in this slum, proper convenience is not the norm. Otoy Logo, like other communities, have government representatives and we reached out to one of them. Good afternoon. This is about the online. Yeah. We are in between Otto community and Logo in Alpha Road. That is exactly where you are talking about. Yes. You know, you know as far as the uh, uh, city is concerned, we have a different CDA in Constituency 1, in which the first of the logo of the extension around the upper road, John Street, is one of the 30, 35, 34 recognized CDA in Lagos mainland Constituency 1. So the community in question is uh, in between the community and the logo extension. That is the upper road. 
because uh, the community there needs government representative and philanthropic assistance in terms of development. That is the truth. Yes. Okay. So, okay. 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 even we are we are we are we are their neck. We are we are we are their neck, and likewise the House of Representatives, Abuja, Dejejimo. We, be, we do believe, as we all know ourselves, this is about the online, at least. We know ourselves, and uh, what we are saying in essence is that at least we are talking about the, 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 the government representative and likewise the community uh, uh, interventions. What we are saying here now is that at least if by virtue of position, your positions, we should be able to liaise with you and come about at least, at least two assistants to elevate and come about development of that autonomous extension. We are very correct, we are very believe in government intervention, government policy, local government, and that's why we said that we are on their neck as far as local government is concerned, and uh, the Honorable Member of the House of Representatives, Abuja, Honorable J.J. Jimo. That is, we have, we have talked to them too, that is why we are not well. Since we have three presently and the councillor in the, the Award B and Award A, as far as the government is concerned, we still need to talk to you at least, even to pay a visit, a day visit to the community and see things, so that we can be able to tell the, uh, the, 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 the speaker or the other honorable in the state or even the governor on our behalf. Okay. We may not have gotten all the answers, but we leave this community with this commitment. You do understand that there's a pandemic around at the moment that's a strong factor. So it is not wise to meet with many community leaders. The person I've just spoken to will be fine if I could meet with that person and we could have a discussion. But what's more important in this regard, based on what I've heard so far, is actually me physically seeing the issues on ground. Myself. Correct. I agree. If one or two individuals tell me anything, it doesn't mean anything. I need to see it for myself. Before the end of the pandemic, of course, I, I, I regularly tour around all the communities and I'm, well, my door is always open to any community leader. Right. It's very strange that uh, I've been communicating through this particular channel. Oh. People right. from that community speak to me all the time and no one's ever mentioned anything of this red nose thing to me. Thank you so very much, Honourable Member, for your time. All right, thank you. It's been an incredible day for me, an experience coming into the life of the people of this slum of Otto, Ilobo, Lagos mainland. And this is Stories from the Slums.